Anybody got a heart rate monitor? <laughs> what an unbelievable atmosphere uh, tonight. Our fans, uh, man, they made such a difference. We're so proud of them. You know, our, we talked all, all week with our players about taking jabs. Right, taking jabs. It's not about throwing haymakers. It's about being accurate and precise with jabs. Right, and just the next play is the most important play. And I thought they really owned that tonight. We talked about coming in this game that we, you know, we have to outrush our opponent. We have to outphysical our opponent. We outrushed um, Ohio State. We talked about field position in this game and how important that was going to be. I thought we gave them some long fields, uh, and that is a great team that we just played. I mean, a lot of credit to Coach Day and the team that he's assembled and put together. Uh, they are really, really good. Right, and there's, you know, there's, there's going to be still. We talked about before this game even was played. Regardless of result, really, all everything's still on the table, you know, for both teams. So uh, I know that they're going to put themselves in position to continue to compete and and be in great shape the rest of the season. But I couldn't be more proud of our guys. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of our coaches. I couldn't be more proud of just getting the opportunity to get to sit in the seat I sit in because there's moments I certainly don't deserve it, and I thought our our. Uh, our team was just unbelievable tonight. So thank you for that atmosphere, and we can open it up. Middle left, two, right. Thank you, Dan. Um, Dan, your thoughts on your thoughts on Jordan James' performance and just the offensive line in front of him, what they were to do to match the physicality of this Ohio State defense? Yeah, I mean, Jordan, man, he runs like he's pissed off all the time. Uh, and we see it every every day in practice. You know, before the game started, he came up to me and said, "Coach, I got you, right." And I know when he says that, he meant it. And uh, he took advantage of those opportunities he got today. Um, and he would he'd be the first one to tell you it was about the the uh, schematic advantages the coach Stein, the offensive staff created, the blocking that Coach Terry's crew did, the the O line. You know, again, I'm gonna go back and watch this film. And I'm gonna try to find how many times we see eleven guys with their hats on somebody. Right, giving us an opportunity, right, to be able to to create a, a big run, and uh, Jordan was a beast tonight. I'm really proud of him. Right here on the right, Zach. It's possible at all. Can you put into words how excited you are right now, and how rewarding this feeling is after all, all the hard work that you guys have put in? You know, what's so hard about football um, is this game is such an emotional game. It's such an impactful game, and in moments like this, where you you want to be filled with complete joy, the relief is is one of the biggest feelings you feel, right? Because of how hard your guys worked, how bad you know they wanted it, but it's never about the team that wants it the most. It's never about the team that just has great emotion. It's about the team that executes. So, uh, you know, I'm, I am. I'm filled with uh, great excitement. I'm really proud of our guys, but I'm also really excited to, you know, figure out what we can go attack and improve because the team we are today, October 12th, is not going to be the same team we are in December. Dan, earlier in the week, we talked about putting safeties in conflict and how they maybe hadn't seen very much of that. On Dylan's touchdown run, that was putting a safety in conflict, and it was against him with, with your two tight ends to the outside. Just walk me through the call, and, and when you see it unfurling, what, what you're thinking once you do have the matchup you want. Yeah, unbelievable decision there uh, by Dylan. You, you hope that you give an opportunity for your players to see every look that they could possibly see within the week, but it's just not reality. So I don't know how many times Dylan actually got to see that exact look. Um, you know, of a tight crash, you know, from the edge. But he did an unbelievable job pulling the ball there in that moment. And then, again, if you look at that play, you're going to see guys with bodies on bodies down the field, you know, blocking their tail off for him so he can create a big play. On the left, Eric, second row. Talk us through that last offensive possession, kind of when did he become – get the field, go get the points, and just kind of what was the process there? Yeah, we were trying to score a touchdown the whole time, right? We, um, but we knew it was an advantage to keep the clock running, so they'd, they'd have to utilize their timeouts and wouldn't have as many opportunities left there at the end. We felt like they could really come out with a lot of options if they had all three timeouts there at the end. So we were trying to score. You know, we were trying to score on the last uh, play there, you know, on the third down play at, at the goal line, um, and they were able to get a great stop. Um, so we kicked the field goal and said, let's play defense. Back left, Matt. Jordan Birch's injury this week. How were you guys able to get past that? And what do you just make of the performance of your guys? He was such a key piece, and they stood up big against a really good offensive line. Yeah, I mean, again, that's a really talented team that we just played. Um, and Jordan is certainly a loss for us. You don't replace a Jordan. He's been unbelievable this season. Um, but, I'm, you know, in football, it's about the next man up. And I know Jordan's probably sitting at home uh, just as proud of these guys being able to do next man up mentality. And you know, we thought there might be a chance that we would be able to um, you know, see him out there. We weren't able to see him out there, but we always want to protect our players first. Um, and Jordan is just, you talk about the year that young man's having. I hurt for him because I know how much he wanted to be a part of this moment. But talk about next man up, right? And some guys showed up tonight. Back left, Max. 
Coach, uh, a lot of back and forth tonight uh, between you and the Buckeyes. Can you just talk about the, the momentum swings and, and how you guys were able to kind of manage those as the game wore on? You know, we talk about a heavyweight fight, right? A heavyweight fight in this game, and we, we knew it could go you know, every round. And uh, it was. It was a back and forth. When you play a really good team, you're going to have to be able to battle in tight games like this. And you know, there's some decisions that could go one way or the other, I'm sure people have thoughts on. Um, but we, we played aggressive tonight. We played to win the game. Um, and our guys went out there and executed in, in critical moments. So, again, I can't say enough great things about that team that we just played. That's an elite football team uh, that we just played. They're really, really talented. They don't have weaknesses. Um, but our guys did just enough tonight to be able to edge it out. Right here in the third seat, third, third row. Hey, Coach. Lane Higgins from the Wall Street Journal. Um, you know, with the structure of the playoff being different this year, it's not like this game necessarily has less meaning because there is more wiggle room for error for teams. But, you know, with that context, you know, how do you prepare a team for a game like this knowing that, you know, perfection is not so do or die anymore? You're saying, do you, is it okay to lose? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Perhaps. I mean, like, again, like I said at the beginning, we knew that regardless of the result of this game, every single one of our goals were in front of us, right? But certainly having a win you know, uh, affects your ability to accomplish your goals later on in the end of the season. We always go into every game with the with the mindset of what can we do, everything that we can do to prepare to win a game. Right? I thought our guys prepared. Um, they prepared all week. Unbelievable. I think they worked really hard in the week. This isn't one of those weeks where you got to motivate guys to work. Um, and, and this isn't one of those teams that I have to go motivate to work. They embrace it. You know, there's been moments this season where I'm telling the guys, hey, we're going to be in spiders this week. And they're like, no, coach, we're going to be in pads. I mean, when you have moments like that, that's when you realize you got a team that's going to be really successful. We're going next seat over. Brandon Marcello, CBS Sports. Uh, Dan, did you just talk about Dylan Gabriel tonight? I know there was so much criticism about miscues in the red zone coming into this game, but he delivered for you night after night tonight, um, and especially being able to pick on their top corner, perhaps, and, and Denzel Burke. What did you think of his performance and where he stands as – one of the top quarterbacks in the nation, potentially. Yeah, I can't say enough great things about Dylan. And Dylan, again, would be the first one to tell you that about talk, start talking about his teammates. But every time I went and looked at his eyes tonight, I saw a guy that was composed, ready for his next moment. Um, and you know what? He threw for what three hundred forty yards, two touchdowns. You know, had a huge pull on that run. You know, down in the red area. Um, you know, he played really, really well tonight in, in some really big moments. Um, so proud of his performance, and I know he'd be the one to tell you that he's proud about the people that were around him that helped that performance, you know, be possible. Over here on the right, Bill. Dan, it feels like it was 17 or 18 hours ago now, but that uh, it's a long game, that, wasn't it? That interception that wasn't that, that Bossa had on, yeah. on the first series. Um, what did you see on that? Why do you think it went down the way it did? Uh, yeah, I, I was I was asking. I mean, I, I thought there might be a review on the field. I feel like they missed that opportunity, and we were trying to get information from up top of if they can see it. You hate to waste a timeout that early if you're wrong, you know, with a, with a potential challenge. Um, but that's certainly one that you hope gets buzzed in when it's that close, uh, and, and it didn't. And I don't, I'm not sure why, but um, you know, again, it's it's about the next play. So we got pretty excited on that play. We almost didn't get back for the next play, um, but you know, those, those things happen. Yeah, Dan, the way that uh, Dylan played tonight, uh, what can that do for you guys and your team going forward? A lot of seasons still left. Yeah, um, you know, consistent performance, right? And in you know, the game of football, it's about what you've done for me lately. So for, you know, for him, it's about continued growth. And I know he'll be a guy that attacks that more than anybody else. And you want to enjoy this moment for a little bit. It's a special moment tonight, but it's about building on it. Uh, and I know Bill, uh, Dylan will be the first one to go attack that and find ways to improve his game. Second row, third seat on this side. Ralph Russo from the Associated Press. Dan, I know you said everything's in front of you. Uh, can you talk a little bit about you, you try to build a program to a certain degree to beat programs like Ohio State, no Jordan, the way you won up front? Does, is there a sense of validation that you're building it the way it's supposed to be built when you win a game like this? Is, is that maybe too, an overstatement? You know, I, I think I say this a lot, that winning football is winning football. I don't care about anybody else's opinion, right? That's one thing that we're, we're not really big on is what anybody else thinks. So we don't, we don't need validation for anybody else, but we do believe in validate, uh, validation of the process. So when we go back and evaluate our process tonight. You know, we're going to find the moments that we thought we got better. We're going to find the things that we can go improve on and, and attack them. Back middle row. Coach, how do you sort of sum up this win for this team? You talked about, you know, the process and – 
having that payoff in the end, all the work that you guys put in, your long day, I mean, starting with game day and the emotions of that to coming in into that locker room over there and celebrating with your team. A lot of, I felt like there was a lot of questions in there, but I'll just say, or maybe there weren't, but, I mean, you can sleep when you die, right? You get an opportunity to do this, like the day that we got to have the day. Like, how awesome is uh, Oregon? How awesome is getting to coach at this place? Uh, our fans, our players, and those guys work so dang hard. Uh, to get moments like this. Um, and again, you might not believe me, but regardless of the result, I was going to be so proud of our guys and how they competed tonight um, because I know how hard they work, right? And, and they left, asked them before the game to leave it all on the field. Give me everything you got. And they did that tonight. Coach, from what I could see on the Jumbotron in the middle of that field store, I think that's the most emotional I've ever seen you after a game. Just what was going through your head down on that field. Yeah, it's a fun moment, man. Fun, fun. It's a fun moment that I know that everyone uh, in that stadium that's wearing green got to enjoy and celebrate, and everybody that worked so hard got to enjoy. And for me, you know, that's the rewarding part is that so many other people can share joy in a moment like that. You know, our players, our fans, uh, the people this program means so much to, you know, that, that that's as much for them as anybody else. And I was, I was glad that they got to have that moment tonight. Fourth row on the right. Out. Uh, couple extra possessions for you guys. You get the um, Derek Harmon fumble recovery there in the first half to get momentum back, and then also the, the kickoff recovery. I was wondering if you could take us through both those plays, and especially that second one, if that it almost didn't look intentional. Yeah, uh, so it was intentional. Um, you know, you could go back and second guess. We, we felt strong about our gate play that we had going in, you know, so we had the ability to potentially move the ball up and do a two-point conversion from a little bit shorter or take the 15-yard penalty. Uh, on the kickoff and you know I felt confident in our in our kickoff option that there's a great chance that we might be able to hit one of their players and get the ball to bounce back if it doesn't hit one of them it's going to be a squib opportunity to pin them inside the 20 so feeling good about you know the gate play that we had called you know Kenyon gets tripped up I think they did a good job of making a play in the backfield we didn't get that and that's definitely one that everybody can you know kind of go back and second guess do you take that penalty get us a little bit closer to the you know the end zone for the opportunity to go for two but that probably eliminates that kick from the 50 where we're hitting a, a player. So I thought it was a great example of our guys not flinching. They knew when we were kicking from the 50 exactly what the plan was. Hey, we're going to try to uh, kick one right off of this guy. Uh, if it doesn't hit him, we have an opportunity to pin him deep, you know, inside uh, inside the 20. Uh, and they executed at a really high level. So. On the right behind you, Hey, Coach, congrats on the win. You know, you talked about game day and how the crowd and the community was all behind you guys. How important was this win, not just for the football program, but for the entire university in your eyes? For the entire what? University. Yeah, huge, man. You know, Oregon's a winner. And uh, our fans, you know, they, again, they were they up last night at like 10, I mean, they were 10 at night camping out for, for game day, that experience. Um, you know, or up early this morning, unbelievable crowd this morning, all the way through the game, right? I don't know if anybody sat down the entire game, but we felt them the entire game. I mean, I had to cover my ear. I, I wear a single earpiece. I had to cover my ear a lot of the game to be able to communicate and hear, uh, and that's a good thing. So we asked them to yell from the minute they got in to the minute they left, and they did an unbelievable job of that. Hey, Coach. Evan Stewart, 150 receiving yards tonight. What can you say about his performance and then just overall your receivers? I'm proud of him, man, and I'm, I'm and maybe more proud that up until this moment, you know, there's been moments where Evan's been able to break out. And there's been moments where maybe the ball didn't get to him or it didn't fall his way, and you never once hear Evan say anything about that. You know, he knew when his opportunity came, he'd get an opportunity to take advantage of it. And he took advantage of his opportunities tonight. He was a weapon out there for us um, and really proud of that performance. Back left. Coach, throughout Dylan Gabriel's career, he's proven that he steps up in the biggest games. What have you seen from him during his time here that allows him to be so successful when the lights are brightest? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to replace experience, right? This guy's been a part of, uh, you know, some games that are really, really big moments. And, you know, even though that stadium is packed, you know, you feel like Dylan was out there operating with an empty place. You know, an em empty stadium, like this was Tuesday, like this was another practice, um, you know, and just executing at a high level, being able to say the next play is the most important play. Uh, and he did that consistently tonight, you know, focusing on what's next and how can he accomplish it. Dan, I know there's a lot of football left in this season, obviously, as, as you'd be the first to say. Um, but looking back at the journey this program has been on in the last couple of years, from that trip to Atlanta to this moment, I mean, what what stands out to you? What uh, you know? What can you say about that journey 
that, that these young men have been. Well, on. there's been a lot of growth, but I'd say we're not done, right? And there's a lot more to do. Uh, and I think everybody in that locker room feels that same way. Uh, I mean, am I pleased with the growth that we've had so far? Absolutely, and every single person's a part of that, right? Not not me, not just our coaches, not just our players. It's the the whole community, the whole University of Oregon, um, our fans. You know, elite players making the decision to come here when they got options to go anywhere in the in the United States. Um, all those things add up, and we always talk about one plus one plus one, right? That's how you, you, you get real gains, and everything matters, right? From the fans, from the people that help clean this building, uh, from the support staff that don't get paid and sleep on the couch, like every piece adds up, and when everybody pulls their weight, you can get great results like you did tonight. All right, Zach, we only got time for a couple more. Ohio Good, because I have to go recruit here. I mean, <laughs> Ohio State, that's one of the best rushing duos in the nation. You guys held up to a combined 110 yards. What did you see from your defensive line the, and their ability to limit them tonight? Well, I mean, that was a really big focus for us. If you look at their six losses, I think, in the last three years, and, you know, every one of those losses, they the, their opponent had outrushed them, right? So that was something that we were really focused on, that we had to come in here and be a more physical team. And we knew they were going to be hard to run against. But we also knew that we were never going to abandon the run um, and continue to focus on it. So that was a goal all week for us to outrush our opponent. And, um, you know, our guys did that tonight. Last question, Matt, in the back. Ohio State had just had zero, yard, or zero plays of 30 yards or more going into this one. You had three just the first half alone. What, what did you guys see in preparing for this to, to do that? And then how much did that help the run game, having to pull them back? Yeah, I think sometimes when you play an offense like this, your first answer is, like, you want to be aggressive and take away everything. And we knew that if we played the game like that, that we were going to give up some explosive plays. So uh, we wanted to wait. We wanted to you know, take opportunities to pitch to them. And I think if you look, really their offense was in rhythm, probably at times maybe better even the, than ours. I think they had a lot of first downs. It wasn't like bleed a slow death for us. We wanted to be aggressive, but aggressive in moments. Um, and again, look for the right times to throw haymakers, but making sure that we eliminate explosive plays. I thought Coach LaPoy did a really good job of that tonight. The defensive staff did a really good job of you know, calming ourselves and not feeling like we had to be extremely aggressive in moments. Um, when it didn't dictate those moments, you know, us being aggressive. Um, and again, you have to be able to win up front, right, to be able to do that. You got to be able to do more with less. And we had some guys up front that did more with less tonight. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. If you see any good players, tell them to come here. <laughs> Dylan, what was going through your mind on that last drive? And then what can you guys take from this win going forward the rest of the season? Yeah, through that drive, uh, just know we need points. Um, uh, but, you know, really knew we had three and, and wanted to get six or seven, of course. But, um, you know, got a, a lot of belief and trust in Atticus and the field goal unit. And then um, just with these kind of games, I think you, you find ways to win. Um, just have, as we have... Um, in, in games prior, uh, but you know, I, I, you know, we all knew what we were getting into. Uh, you know, a dogfight and two heavyweights going at it. Um, but that's what college football is all about. We're excited for that opportunity and um, took advantage of it. Front left, James. Bill, we talked during the week about putting safeties in conflict. You do that on the touchdown run. Mm -hmm. Walk me through what you're seeing to keep it. Once the mesh charge happens, and then once you get the matchup you're looking for, how you're able to shake the safety and, and obviously hit the end zone. Yeah, I think schematically we did a good job early in the week of uh, finding matchups we liked. Um, but you know, they're a damn good football team, so you got to uh, take it while you can. And uh, just great downfield blocking, um, you know, reading that, that end defender um, and, and trying to make them pay for it. But, you know, they, they played their butt off, and they're an extremely talented team that. Uh, made you earn everything, um, but to go to the beginning of the week, I mean, I, I just wanted to see how, how you were, James, and I know we were talking about. It. I'm not, you know, but I just wanted to get a post game, uh, maybe one one word answer of how you feel. I like that. I like that. <laughs> uh, Pat Forty from Sports Illustrated. Dylan, you have as much experience as anyone. How much did that help you in a game where you just have to keep answering drive after drive? I think naturally you're, you're put in situations um, never the same, but pretty similar. Um, and you just use your, your knowledge from past experiences to, to your advantage. And, um, you know, I, I think 
I've been in many games where it came down to a drive or two and, and times you need points in the red area and, you know, things don't change in that end. It just magnifies in big games of, you know, third down, fourth down, uh, red area touchdowns, um, you know, continue to be really good on first and second. So you're in manageables, but, um, you know, I just think in all we up front as a unit, we came together and, and found a way and, um, you know, I tried to use my my knowledge, you know, as best as I can with this team and our guys. Um, but we all help e each other because they've played a bunch of balls well. All right, Chris. Yeah, Dylan, can you pull the curtain back a little bit and tell us what it was like in that locker room post game? Well, I can't give you all the secrets. But I will say it was just a lot of fun. Winning is fun, you know, and there's a lot of joy in winning, uh, to, to be frank with you. But, um, you know, I, I think these are moments that um, – are just a tad bit that you can enjoy, right? Um, we know this is just a step for us in the right direction. Um, and a, a big win because we played a great team, you know, and uh, they, like I said, they're a, a great team that challenges you on offense, defense, and special teams. So um, we're going to enjoy it. Tomorrow we got recovery circuit, got to wake up just like everyone. Sun rises tomorrow. Um, and you got to go earn it. That's, that's the beauty of the game we play. I caught a glimpse of you coming off the field um, at the tunnel, and you were on another level than I think I've ever seen you. Just um, super amped. Just what did that moment mean to you, and, and how has it felt to just be so embraced by this community here? Yeah, a lot of f bombs, um, but rightfully so. Um, you know, I just I know how much time and effort you know everyone puts into this, and that goes from coaches, players. You know, people, support staff within this building that, you know, make the whole show go. And um, like I said, there's joy in winning and you love to see your team succeed. So uh, just in that moment, I, I take time to appreciate, you know, everyone who's, you know, somehow helped us get to this point. Um, and uh, like I said, it's when you win against a great opponent, um, you enjoy it for that time. And um, so be it. We, we wake up tomorrow. Ross Dellinger or Yahoo. Dylan, uh, walk me through what you're thinking as, you know, Ohio State's going down, right, and getting into field goal range and the big penalty happens and then the field rush. Just take us through all that a little bit in your mind. Yeah, just coming together with the boys, you know, um, watching the game and, you know, you're on the edge of your seats. Um, but you got ultimate, you know, belief in the guys on the field and defense. And, you know, they actually beat us in two minutes this week. Um, so I, I had confidence in them, and um, I, I just, I mean, I really couldn't tell you. you know, clock struck zero, you just enjoy it, you know, and that's with every win, that's with every game. You just know how hard it is to win um, on a consistent basis. Um, that's because they got scholarship players too, you know, so it's it's competitive. you got to make plays. Dylan, I think six weeks ago you guys um, got the win against Idaho, but – a lot of questions internally, obviously externally, but um, especially internally, kind of about where you guys were. Can More externally, the, but sure. sure. Sorry. But but what were the? What were? Can you draw a straight line from how you guys went from there to here, and then where if you're drawing a line? Where does that line lead after this? If I could tell you, I would. But you know, the truth is, we're just just so rooted in, in the process and in what we're doing. You know, I don't. I don't think I saw anyone flinch, whether it's the way in which we won, um, but just want, you know, the, the, the want to get better and continue to grow. Um, I appreciate that as, as a player. You know, you see, you know, staff just acting the same, you know, whether it's a win or a loss, you know, thank goodness, you know, we, we've been on the plus side, but you understand how hard it is. So um, looking at the, the different ways to go to the doctor and get better um, in every area, um, but you just see everyone continue to grow. And I think you can see that from week one to, to now, um, just how much more confident players are playing, um, but also, you know, us as a team kind of, you know, forming together as one. Brandon Marcello, CBS Sports. Dylan, you've been coast to coast with, with three programs. Morgan Wallen. Coast to coast ain't good. How does Sorry. this win rank or feel among all the big ones you've had over your career? You know, I, I would just say you, you appreciate, you know, year to year, 
Um, each team is different. Each place is different and unique. Um, so, so you appreciate that and the difference. You know, I, I think I've learned a bunch at each stop. Um, and more importantly, you know, who I am as a person. Um, and there's, there's real development in that as a, as a player, but also as a person, you know, through those times. And I, I just now, at, at this point in my career, I just appreciate, you know, where I'm at, the present, uh, the people that work so hard to allow us to do what we do. Um, and I never take a, a day for granted. And that's because I know, you know, how, how hard it is to do what we do as well and the time we put in and the, the grind. But it's something I love and have been addicted to from the beginning. You know, it's kind of been my way of living. So, um, yeah, just to answer your question, I've, I've loved every bit of it. What was the key to getting Evan involved? And Dan was up here a moment ago kind of complimenting the way he's carried his business, even in games where he, he hasn't been as involved. Can you maybe speak to that part too? Yeah, just taking advantage of matchups. And, you know, that's uh, – you know, you <laughs> it's hard. You, you have a lot of talent, and there's only one ball. So you have to distribute it as best you can. But at the same time, you want to be in, a, in you know, advantage matchups. And um, – you know, today was his day, and he took full advantage of it. And I, I think you look at that from every game. You know, sometimes it's going to be a T. Ferg night. Sometimes it's going to be Evan, Tez, Trey, you know, whoever it may be, Jordan James and Noah on the ground. Um, I think when you look at it like that, it's it's a mixture of, of trying to take advantage of, of matchups or, you know, isolation, um, but also trying to get everyone involved. I think you, you try to balance that as best as possible. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give that to Coach Stein as well to, to handle. Thank you, guys.